and welcome to another episode of All Things Honor. We are back. It is the fallout of Final Battle, and it seems like we've forgotten how to book Ring of Honor TV because we are back to where we were a, maybe about a month ago. But we are here, and let's get on with the episode. So we start with a mem and athena says that this is the most important mem of the year because nobody thought that she would win a final battle but she proved the fans wrong and won she asks lexi nair why she hesitated to bring her the ring of honor women's title in the middle of the match and she says she did not hear her quote unquote athena says later in the night starks will have a message for all the fans but for now she's going to take out all of her aggression that nair caused on my world who is her opponent later on in the night this was fun. I mean, I think everyone's kind of shocked that Athena retained because I, you know, we all thought that she was going to go up to AEW and wrestle more up there, but I guess we'll see where this goes. Our first match of the night was the Work Horseman versus the Von Erics, and I also will say that Honor Club had issues again. So this is the second time that Honor Club has had issues, and the episode started 40 minutes late. So not as bad as the first time, where the first time it was 62 minutes late, but this was a really big problem because I know that there were a lot of people who specifically bought Honor Club for Final Battle, and now you have issues with the first episode post final battle so all those people that bought honor club are like oh why did i spend the ten dollars they can't even get their own site right so this is something that definitely needs to get fixed so i'm hoping next week that we don't have the same problem but regardless uh before the match begins drake cuts a promo on the texas crowd saying that they will prove in their match that they are the true heroes of texas and not a team like the von erics this match was great i would love for the von erics to be in ring of honor more often i said this at the final battle review episode that they are really good and i think that they really showed all over AEW programming this week you know they were on rampage and they were on final battle and they were on this episode they proved that they are a really good tag team so i hope tony khan really does see that in them and after the match was over, Anthony and Henry attacked the Von Erics as Kevin applied the mandible claw to Henry and the Texas crowd went crazy. Obviously, this was to promote Iron Claw, which comes out today if you're watching this on Friday. I'm actually seeing it tomorrow, Saturday. So I heard good reviews. So hoping it's good. But yes, the Von Erics win. And again, would love to see them more in Ring of Honor. Next, we had a Proven Grounds match. For the our Ring of Honor Women's Championship, it was Athena versus Maya World. And despite losing this past Friday, Starks looked excited to be out there with Athena during this match. Commentary mentioned during the match that World was a rookie who is currently being trained by Athena. I thought that was a nice touch because I don't think a lot of people know that Athena also has a wrestling school that she teaches wrestlers at. I found that out in person, actually, when she was telling me about it two years ago. So I thought it was really interesting that the crowd can, or the people at home can find that out. Um, Athena dominated most of this matchup, but World had a great showing, and I definitely would love to see her more in Ring of Honor. And after the match, Athena raids World's arm to kind of be like, yeah, woohoo, look at this young upstart. And then she attacked her, and Billy left on. And Athena retained. So I believe she's 44 or 45 and 0 in Ring of Honor competition, which is crazy. <laughs> then we have a Tony Khan announcement and this was legitimately the shortest Tony Khan announcement of all time like it was maybe 30 seconds so Khan says that the women's division Ring of Honor has been growing and he wants to make more history in the division and he introduces the women's television championship as Ian and Capri say that more information will be provided in the coming weeks in my opinion Layla Hirsch should be the one to win this I think she deserves it I think with the promo we see later on I think the final should actually be Rachel and Layla but I guess we'll see. I'm actually kind of shocked that we didn't even get maybe the announcement of a tournament, but I'm thinking maybe we wait until the new year kicks off because I don't know what their plans are for Super Card of Honor, but I could assume that maybe that will be the match. Like the finals will be at Super Card of Honor, but I don't know what their plans are if they plan on running up here in Philly or not. Next, we had Dante Martin versus Lee Johnson. Dante Martin is back. 
his first singles match. I believe this is actually his first singles match back since his injury. Uh, this match was fun. Both these men are going to be the future of the wrestling business, whether it be Ring of Honor or AEW. The match was a great back and forth, and it could have been anyone's match, but in the but but in the end, Martin returned with a huge win. I was excited about this. I mean, I was actually kind of confused later on because Darius and Action were in tag team competition. And I was like, so shouldn't they have teamed up and like Action take the singles match? But regardless, happy that Dante was able to get the big one. Next, we get a men of the year promo. So this was actually shot after the I quit match of final battle. Paige says that this win feels great. And he has always said he was going to be great, but he never believed what he had said until recently. He says the locker room ring of honor is filled with people who are not confident and he is ready to prove why he is one of the best. He is also excited now that he is back up in his best friend, Scorpio Sky. If you watched the press conference, he had actually said that when him and Scorpio had just signed to AEW. Tony really didn't have anything for them. And then Tony called him into his office and was like, are you guys friends? And they lied and said yes, just so they can get an opportunity to be on TV. Now they actually are real life friends. And now them both being a Ring of Honor page is very excited for that opportunity. So would not be shocked if we get some Ring of Honor tag team gold on them when we fix that situation, which I'm hoping is sooner than later. Um, maybe the devil wins it next week, which I had actually tweeted. I would love if that happens. <laughs> Sky says that Paige has been supportive through his entire TNT title run, and now he is here until Paige fulfills the promise he made his daughter, and he finally wins Ring of Honor gold. Which, like I said, looks like that'll be the Ring of Honor tag titles. Can we fix that problem? Maybe that'll be Ring of Honor's New Year's resolution 2024. Next, we have the Gates of Acne versus Willie Mack and Blake Christian. And let me tell you, when Gates of Agony have learned a lot in the New Japan Tag League, because, oh my god, they were very dominant throughout this match, and they have a new focus and determination in all of their matches now. They ran through Mac and Christian and got the win. Like, they barely had any offense. I was like, wow. So, Gates of Agony get the win. All right. Next, we had Lance Archer and the Righteous versus the Iron Savages and Jax Jameson. J Jackson Jameson and I was actually really confused <laughs> because the Lance Archer was not there and I was like where was he like what I don't I don't get it um I also really don't understand the whole Lance Archer and the righteous partnership I don't like it I think it's actually kind of bad I I just don't see that it fits not a fan but maybe after more time, it'll grow on me. I mean, I was the same way with the infantry, and they grown on me a lot this past year. So maybe something similar like that will happen. But I will say that the Iron Savages is the most entertaining team on the Ring of Honor roster right now. They know how to get the crowd going and always get them involved in their matches. The newest team of the Righteous and Archer won as they continue to prove themselves as a forceful trio on the Ring of Honor roster. Like I said, I still don't like. I I don't like it. Also, where is Jake Roberts? Like, what? <laughs> Next, we have a Gates of Agony promo. Khan says that they have come back from Japan and evolved as well as become better men. He also said that they're going to wrestle every team in Ring of Honor until they get to the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. Nana says that Khan and Leona are two men who are deserving of the titles, and no one should be sleeping on them as a team, as they will soon be the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, which is great. If we could fix the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship problem. <sighs> One day. Then. <sighs> we had a Marie. You're already going to know my opinion of this. We had a Maria Canellis, Griff Garrison, and Cole Carter promo. Canellis says she is happy that they got the huge win last week. And she thinks... And she thanks her song for doing the trick. She says that she has been in the studio all week and they should be excited to see the final product of the song. In the meantime, she signed an eight-man tag team match for tonight and she introduced Sir Pentico and Ed Helico as their tag team partners. Carter and Garrison are not happy about this, but Canella says to trust her and they are great. So I did like this. Thought it made a lot of sense. Did not like that we had back-to-back -back promos. Next, we had Taya Valkyrie and vert vixen and let me tell you so excited that vert vixen is going to get continued opportunities ring of honor i saw on twitter that people were saying that she was going to be 
a mainstay on the Ring of Honor Women's Division. Love that. Got to meet her earlier this year. Worked with her. Big fan. Valkyrie was great here. She was able to shine throughout the entire match while also allowing Ver Vixen to show off in the match as well. Valkyrie gets the win as she goes to 3-0 in Ring of Honor competition. So keep track of that because that's a big deal. And I'm sure it will be mentioned somehow next week. Next, we had a Shane Taylor promotions promo. Lee Moriarty says he felt that final battle was his night to become Ring of Honor TV champion, and he is at a plateau, and he does not know what to do. He says that he is going to get back to the top of Ring of Honor and prove that he is one of the best in Ring of Honor. Shane Taylor says everyone is on notice, and STP is going to be on the top of Ring of Honor. Sure. Cool. I mean... To me, I think Lee Moriarty needs to get out of Shane Taylor. Promotions get used a little bit more, but whatever's going to work. Next, we had Charlotte Renegade versus Rachel Ellering, and this is where things got interesting. The The story... Oof, here we go. This this match was great until Canellas got involved. Canellas pulled the leg of Ellering when she... When she wasn't looking to put the match away, and unlike a couple weeks ago, Hirsch caught her red-handed. Despite this, Ellering was able to get the win as Hirsch and Ellering questioned Canellis' loyalty to both Ellering and Hirsch. Now, this is interesting because, like we said, like, there's a promo later on about this, but... Like we've been saying, you know, Hurst is going to have to pick a side. Is she going to go to Maria? Is she going to go to Rachel? So, this is really interesting. I really do like this, and... This is why I think the finals is going to be Layla and Rachel, in my opinion. Next, we had a Johnny TV and Taya Valkyrie promo, which I thought was kind of pointless. Um, Taya and Johnny celebrated Taya's win as Nair asked about costing Castle a final battle. Johnny calls Castle a pigeon and says that Castle can never draw ratings like he and Valkyrie do. But then we got this Dalton Castle promo, which I thought was amazing. So Castle says he has not slept and he is just devastated for the Ring of Honor viewers. He says the TV championship was his ticket to every TV in the world and he was going to earn the respect of everyone in Ring of Honor. He was also going to be on the TV trucks and also make Castle figures, but Johnny TV ruined it for the viewers, Castle, and the boys. He promises that Johnny and Taya will pay for what they did since they ruined Ring of Honor TV for everybody. Now... It's on the Ring of Honor Twitter. Go watch this. Because John, not Johnny, Dalton is so distraught. He is so upset. He is dead. When we get to his match, it is literally, his entrance is so funny. Because he literally has a coffee cup in his hand, trying to keep awake. Like, oh my god. But this was good. I'm really excited for this feud. In my opinion, I think that's why Castle and Johnny should have been in the six-man match a final battle to kind of elevate the tv title a little bit especially because kyle actually wasn't on this week's episode of ring of honor so interesting interesting things are happening loved it um so now we have the outrunners versus the infantry versus action jardy and darius martin which they also was like saying it was the main event but it wasn't the main event so, like I said earlier, I questioned why Dante didn't team with his brother instead of him instead of the singles match earlier, but I'm not booking Ring of Honor. I'm not Tony Khan. Um, I, I don't like that we still have tag teams fighting over nothing, and this is a problem that needs to get fixed sooner than later. This match was fine. Um, Andrade and Martin won. I don't know what this is leading to. I know they're fighting the acclaimed this weekend on Collision. For the AW Trios titles. I wouldn't mind them winning. I think that'd be actually really cool. So sure. Good match. Nothing to complain about. Now we have the Maria Canellis promo. So Canellis is talking about the Ring of Honor TV Women's TV Championship. She's excited for more opportunities for the women. And Hirsch confronted Canellis and said that she was trying to cost Ellering the match. Ellering says that being tied with Canellis is not going to help any of them get closer to that Ring of Honor Women's Championship. Hirsch apologizes to Ellering for not seeing that Canellis was screwing her over all along. Ellering and Hirsch both say that the Ring of Honor Women's Championship is a huge opportunity for both of them, so they should both go out there and try to win. Now, it is also really important that they had, like, Hirsch said, you know what, I'm done with you. Like, I want nothing to do with you, Maria. And Maria said, okay, it's going to be really lonely out there and you guys are going to struggle. So don't come calling back to me this time. 
So I think it'd be actually really interesting if the finals is Ellering and Hirsch and then Ellering gets the win and then this is going to leave Hirsch to calling back to Maria like you're right like I killed the tournament I did so good I made it to the finals and I just couldn't do it and maybe I do need your help to win the big one because it goes back to Athena where she had the match with Athena and Maria wasn't there and she lost so maybe the third time's the charm of oh maybe if I do have you by my side I'll win the big one. So I'm thinking that's where we're going with this. If not, I have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> Next, we had Trapentico and Helico, Cole Carter, Anchor Carrison versus Gravity, Delta Castle, and the boys. Like I said, Castle came out with coffee and looked so distraught. And he literally, so if you watch the Dalton Castle entrance, you know he does the whole, like he waves his arms in the air with the peacock wings. And he couldn't even do it. He was so upset. Um, anytime Gravity teams with Dalton Castle and the boys, you know you're in for a good match. We talked about it. I think it was like a month ago that Gravity actually wore like the mask of the boys because he wanted to fit in and it was really funny. Castle was able to get into a groove once the match started and he was able to get the win. After the match, Castle screamed to the TV that he did it for the people and that he's going to get his revenge on Johnny TV. Excited to see where that goes. I would even... If you want to play it back, I would actually do Dalton and Kiera versus Taya and Johnny. I think that would be a good match if you want to kind of extend this to a pay-per-view or whatever. I think that would be fun. Next, we had our main event. It was Gringo Loco and Jack Cartwheel versus Commander and Vikingo. Don't blink when you watch this match. You might miss something because, oh my god, they were flying. This was so fun and such a great main event. Um, The Kingo has been more of a regular on Ring of Honor TV, which I find interesting because I know people have been kind of speculating that he signed to AEW, and I kind of agree with that. And I'm hoping maybe, not if not at World's End, that maybe sometime early next year we get the announcement that The Kingo is signed. But the champs win to close... To close out the show, if you have Honor Club, go watch this one. As Commander and the King of Win. Overall, I think as most of you expected, I thought there were way too many backstage promos. I get it. We had to answer questions from the pay-per-view. This was not the way to do it. I think there was probably more backstage promos than matches, which I think is a problem. But I'm excited for the Ring of Honor Women's TV title. I think that's going to be really fun. And I'm just excited to see where we go into the new year. I think that Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor has a lot of momentum right now, and they just got to play into that, and hopefully we'll fix a lot of the hiccups that we had this year. And that is it for me, and I'll see you guys next week for our final episode of the year, episode number 44 of Ring of Honor TV. Very, very excited for that. But other than that, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you guys next week.